Hello everyone, welcome back to Lewis Fiction and welcome to my pitch for Spider-Man 98. If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you love Spider-Man stories and fan fiction, we upload every single Thursday and Sunday. I also just want to announce that memberships are now available for Lewis Fiction, so if you want extra perks and content, then just make sure to click the join button down below. With that said, let's get straight into this. Now, my version of Spider-Man 98 will be split up into two sagas, each comprising of six episodes each. The first saga will focus on finding Mary Jane Watson, wrapping up a bunch of stuff that was left open-ended at the end of Season 5. And the second saga will be introducing a brand new overarching villain called The Rose, who has managed to overpower New York City and the underground crime that is happening in the city since Spider-Man has been gone. But without further ado, here is Episode 1. So episode one opens with Madame Webb dropping Peter off in 19th century London, saying that she can't intervene any further, but he will find Mary Jane around here. Peter will ask why, but Madame Webb says that she can't intervene in the events that are about to transpire and leaves Peter to go on his journey. Peter doesn't know where to start. However, he'll start hearing rumors and whispers around the city that apparently Jack the Ripper is at large. Peter will of course already know Jack the Ripper from old English folklore. The first place that Peter ends up looking for Mary Jane is that he finds an old phone book. There are four Mary Watsons living in London. Two are working as cleaners, one in a factory and one as an author. Peter goes to the first two and finds out that it's not them. However, during this time, Peter is distracted as banks are being robbed. Spider-Man goes to intervene as he usually does. And this is when he encounters his first villain, a genetically mutated cat called Puma. Peter will think to himself that he's dealt with way worse and decides to engage with it. However, it gets away into the sewer system, leaving Spider-Man to question what had just gone down. We then move on to episode two, where Peter goes to the sewers to explore where Puma went to. He will make a reference all the way back to episode one of the entire series, where he followed the lizard down the sewers to find Dr. Connors. Peter then encounters another villain in the sewers called Vermin, who is another mutated creature. Vermin knocks Spider-Man out during their battle, and that's when Vermin takes him to their leader. Peter wakes up in an underground laboratory led by none other than Dr. Curtis Connors of the 19th century London universe. In this universe, Dr. Connors is kind of a mockery of Dr. Frankenstein, but instead making Frankenstein's monster, he basically experiments on different animals and turns them into giant mutated monsters. Dr. Connors tries to experiment on Peter, but Peter manages to escape, and this is where Dr. Connors turns himself into a giant mutant lizard, just like from Marvel's Spider-Man 2. This gives Peter a different challenge to how he's fought the lizard before, and they face off. Peter manages to defeat the giant lizard, and returns to going back to find MJ. Moving on to episode 3, Peter goes to uncover the last two Mary Watsons from the phone book. He visits the one who works in the factory first, and it's not her. Peter goes to uncover the fourth, who is the author. He goes to her house, but she isn't there. However, as Spider-Man started to look around her house for clues to see if it was his version of Mary Jane Watson, he uncovers some books that were written by her. He flicks through the books, and some of the things are eerily similar to things that have happened in Peter's life. There are references to Spider-Man, with characters that resemble that of people from Peter's personal life. Peter will get the hunch that this is the right person, however, that's when he starts to hear screaming from the street. Peter goes to the window and sees Carnage? Peter goes to encounter Carnage and wonders how the hell the Carnage symbiote ended up in this earth. Well, that's when he remembers. When he fought Spider Carnage at the end of season five, he threw himself into the interdimensional portal. Peter thought he'd be in limbo, but it turns out he has also landed in 19th century London. Because Peter was caught off guard, he doesn't end up winning the battle and Carnage ends up getting away. Peter then realizes if the Carnage symbiote is here, that must mean that another version of himself is also here, since this version of the Carnage symbiote must have come from Spider Carnage. This is when he spends the rest of the episode seeking out another version of Peter Parker, until he comes across a professor, a scientist, a physicist, who is working at Oxford University. When Spider-Man tries to confront the Professor, the Professor ends up running away, not wanting anything to do with him. He runs until Spider-Man stops him. The Professor, or as we'll call him, Peter B, tells Peter that he's trying to hide away from Carnage, and that the Londoners refer to it as Jack the Ripper. And that's when Peter clicks, Jack the Ripper is Carnage in this universe, as no one knows its true identity. Peter is asking why is it destroying innocent lives, and Peter B says to lure him out, his one true host. You see, Peter B is trying to hide away from Carnage, but Carnage wants to rebond with Peter. 
and Peter is in hiding. But since he's Spider-Man, the Carnage symbiote understands that if it starts killing people, his natural instinct as Spider-Man will take over. But Peter B has resisted this and has stayed in hiding ever since. We then move on to episode 4 as we learn a bit more about this version of Peter. Peter B reveals to our Peter how he actually got separated from the symbiote in the first place. A scientist actually helped him separate from it. Our Peter manages to convince Peter B to help him to take down Carnage. Peter B hesitates at first as he doesn't want to become Spider Carnage again, however ends up helping him. They end up using Peter B as bait to lure out Carnage and they both team up to fight it. However, the Carnage symbiote detaches from its host and goes straight straight back to Peter B. Peter faces off against Spider Carnage in a battle eerily similar to the one at the end of Season 5. Peter remembers that loud sounds can affect the symbiote. He lures Spider Carnage to Big Ben and uses the clock tower to get it off Peter B. Peter will ask Peter B if he wants to go home. However, Peter B will say that he's enjoying his life here and Peter has also inspired him to become Spider-Man again. And this is when Peter B vows to become the Spider-Man of the 19th century London universe. However, after all is said and done and Carnage is dealt with, Episode 4 ends with Spider-Man finding the author, Mary Watson, who successfully turns out to be the real Mary Jane Watson. We then move on to episode 5, and this will be mainly an episode of MJ and Peter catching up. Spider-Man will reveal his identity to Mary Jane as they both reunite. If you remember, Spider-Man actually revealed his identity to Mary Jane Watson in the original 90s show. However, that version of Mary Jane revealed to be created by Hydro-Man and ended up evaporating, meaning that Peter never actually revealed his real identity to the real Mary Jane Watson. So that will be one of the main events that happens at the start of this episode. MJ will tell Peter that she's been searching for a way home this entire time. She doesn't actually know how she got here and she isn't really aware of the events that led up to her getting here in the first place. And this is when it's revealed that apparently MJ has been working with none other than Norman Osborn, who she also found ended up in this reality. Now, of course, it's worthy to note that MJ won't remember that Norman Osborn's identity is actually the Green Goblin. So she is more likely to trust him in this instant. Peter will tell her that Osborn is dangerous and MJ will tell him that it's her only way. Peter will try and tell her about everything that happened with him and the Green Goblin. But MJ will have none of it, saying that she's been trying trying to find a way back for all this time, and now Peter is coming along just telling her, no, she can't do that. Plus, she doesn't even know if our Peter is the real Peter. He's just shown up out of nowhere. This sprouts into an argument as MJ goes about her day. Peter realizes the only way to try and get to the bottom of what's going on is to track down Norman Osborn. Peter just hopes that it's this universe's version of Norman rather than the one that was stuck in limbo. However, as Peter goes on to discover, it in fact was the one that was stuck in limbo. The one that he fought all those seasons ago. Norman is confronted angrily by Spider-Man. However, Norman claims that he's changed and that he's actually good now. He's had time to reflect on the events that happened and he's decided to leave the Green Goblin behind. Norman reveals to Peter that he's been working on a new time dilation device for a year now, based on the limited tech he's had in the 19th century. Peter won't believe Norman much at first, but does he really have a choice? This will be a dilemma that plagues Peter's mind throughout the rest of this episode, as Molten Man attacks London. Peter will be confused as to where Molten Man came from as he goes to save the day. However, during the battle, it will look like all is lost for Spider-Man, until Norman ends up helping him and gaining his trust. We then move on to episode 6 and the final part in the first arc of the season. Despite the past that these characters share, Peter ends up trusting Norman for three reasons. One, because he helped him with Molten Man, two, because he wants the trust of Mary Jane back, and three, Norman is the only way back to his Earth. Norman and Peter, for the first part of this episode, work together to get back to their Earth, when Norman ends up double-crossing him at the last second and takes MJ trying to escape, leaving Spider-Man there. Peter reacts quickly, however, and manages to jump into the portal in limbo with Norman. Norman becomes the Green Goblin again and quickly fights Spider-Man as it's all revealed that Spider-Man was being set up this entire time. Also bearing in mind that Mary Jane is also caught up in all of this. They will arrive back to their Earth and battle it out. The Goblin reveals that he knew Spider-Man would come looking for Mary Jane eventually, so he set his traps. He gave Dr. Connors the technology possible to complete his experiments, which led to Puma and Vermin. He detached the Carnage symbiote from Peter B, as it's revealed that Norman Osborn was the scientist that helped him, and then gave it to a random host, someone who didn't have the willpower to control it. 
And then it's also revealed that Norman Osborn was behind the creation of Molten Man in episode 5. All of this to slow Peter Parker down while he worked on a way to get back to his Earth and trap him on that Earth forever while he went to destroy his life. It turns out that Norman never actually reformed and getting revenge on Peter Parker was all that he could think about this entire time. His plan to trap him in 19th century London has failed, so the only thing the Goblin can do is try and destroy Spider-Man once and for all. And in an epic battle, the fight between Peter and Norman is finally over, as Peter comes out on top and the Green Goblin is all but defeated. We then move on to episode 7, as Peter and MJ reunite officially. Peter catches MJ up on everything that has happened since she was gone. And just as he has done before, Peter then proposes to Mary Jane Watson. However, MJ will say no. She hasn't actually got things straight first. She's been gone for a whole year and has basically had her entire life taken away from her. She doesn't want to rush into things and she's just a bit confused. She needs to think first and she needs to get her life back on track. Peter understands this, but obviously this puts him in a little bit of a rut. While Peter has also been gone, a new crime lord has emerged, the Rose. Everyone is terrified of him, and it turns out that he has been controlling the streets of New York ever since Spider-Man left. Peter teams up with Luke Cage to get to the bottom of some gang warfare that the Rose is potentially involved in. Peter and Cage find out that the gang warfare was set up to keep the heroes distracted. We then move on to episode 8, as Mary Jane goes off to visit Anna Watson and tries to figure out where she fits in in society. And it's worth mentioning by this point that the celebrations of Mary Jane's return have already happened between Anna Watson, Aunt May and immediate friends. She doesn't know what to do and she goes into a kind of depression even wondering if she still loves Peter anymore. We also have to remember that Mary Jane has to deal with the revelation of knowing Peter as Spider-Man now. It all came so thick and fast and she didn't have time to really process it. But now that she's had time to think about it, does she even want to be with Peter if he's Spider-Man? Would that put her in danger and their potential future kids in danger as well? Anna Watson, not really knowing this, still goes on to reassure her by asking her if she loves Peter. Mary Jane says, of course she does. And Anna Watson will say, that's all that matters. It's just her. She needs to take some time and just figure life out and then she can get back to dealing with Peter. She doesn't need him plaguing her mind at the moment. As long as she loves him, that's all that matters. She can focus on Peter later. And on the Peter side of things, he feels like he's just got her back but he might lose her again and this plagues his mind for the rest of the episode. Peter, however, has more important things to think about, as he approaches none other than Marvel hero Jessica Jones, who has also been on the Rose case. She's deduced that he is somehow connected to the Kingpin, as she has some insider information. Jessica and Spider-Man end up paying Kingpin a visit, who says the Rose is his son, and he has nothing to do with him. He's gone rogue, and he's also threatening Kingpin's criminal empire. Kingpin will say that he's dead to him. Spider-Man will say to Jessica that he might know a guy who might know a thing or two about the situation. Jessica and Spider-Man go to visit Hobie Brown, the Prowler. The Prowler, if you remember, was in prison with Kingpin's son all those seasons ago. So Spider-Man assumes that he might know where he's at. Hobie tells Jessica and Spider-Man that he's been tracking him for weeks. And this leads to a confrontation between the Rose, his men, and Jessica, Spider-Man, and the Prowler as they fight it out. Spider-Man is rusty, however, and the Rose manages to beat them. Jessica could tell something was off with Spider-Man and Peter tells her about MJ. We learn more about Jessica's character in this scene, as she tells Peter that she's also had many relationships. She's never honest with them, and he needs to be honest. Episode 9 rolls around, and Peter meets up with MJ. They will both say that they need to talk to one another. Peter says that he loves her, and MJ will say that she loves him too, but she wants to get her life back on track first. She wants to be together with him, but she just needs a little bit more time. But she doesn't want him to feel like they're splitting up. Peter respects this and is slightly more reassured with the whole situation. MJ tries to get a job as an actress to pick up where she left off in her past life. However, during the first day of filming, he's interrupted as Mysterio uses the set to stage a bank heist. Spider-Man intervenes and stops Mysterio. However, it turns out this isn't just another petty theft from Quentin Beck, and it actually goes a lot deeper than that. It's revealed then that Mysterio has been hired as Beck is sent back to prison. Spider-Man believes this to be the Rose as he starts to gain more power throughout the city. 
We move on to episode 10, and the Rose is conscious that Spider-Man is a threat to his criminal empire. We also learn more about the Rose, and more about him as a character. It turns out when he was in prison, all he could think about was getting out and taking control and seize as much power as humanly possible. It turns out as a child, he looked up to his father, Wilson Fisk, which was what landed him in prison in the first place. And the first thing he could do when he got out was to try and emulate his father. However, Fisk saw that he was taking it too far and severed ties with him. And now going under the alias The Rose, he would try and seize control over New York City as the big man of crime. But not only that, to try and stop Spider-Man, who we saw as a threat, by creating the Insidious 12. No, not the Insidious 6, the Insidious 12. The Kingpin believes his son to be a danger to the city and everything he's built, so decides it's time to take action. Fisk requests to team up with Spider-Man, and Spider-Man hesitantly accepts, but knows that this might be the only way to take down his son. MJ decides being an actress isn't for her, and decides maybe she should take up being an author like she did in the 19th century. The Insidious 12 comprises of the Vulture, Mysterio, Shocker, Doc Ock, Scorpion, Rhino, Hobgoblin, the Rose, Smythe, Chameleon, Big Wheel, and newcomer, the Beetle. Kingpin arranges a meeting between him and his crime associates, Silvermane, Hammerhead, and a few others along with Spider-Man to determine ways to stop him. Spider-Man encounters the Insidious 12 at the end of episode 10 and gets his behind handed to him as the Insidious 12 come out on top and Spider-Man barely escapes alive. We roll around to episode 11. The city is in chaos and the Rose has pretty much overrun the police and any brute force that's put together to stop him. MJ during this time goes into hiding and journals her experience through the chaos. Spider-Man then teams up with the heroes he fought alongside throughout the last few episodes, including Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Daredevil also joins this group, and we get a mini Defenders crossover with Spider-Man in this episode as well. People may be asking, well, where's Iron Fist? His spot will be filled by the Prowler. Most of this episode is them trying to stop individual members of the Insidious 12 who are running rampant throughout the city. We then move on to the grand finale of the entire season, episode 12, and the last episode in the Rose arc. This last episode has the Insidious 12 finally be defeated by Spider-Man and the Defenders, whilst Kingpin and his associates work out to find a way to track down Rose. The Rose is eventually confronted by Spider-Man and the Defenders, and one last battle ensues. This time, Spider-Man is out on top firmly, and finally, the city is sent back to normal. After all the dust has settled, we end the episode with Peter finally proposing to Mary Jane Watson. And because she's finally got her life back together and everything in order, and she's dedicating her life to becoming an author, realizing that's what she wants to actually do, she says yes to Peter, in one of the most happiest moments of the series. We then cut to six months later, and they are finally getting married. The real Peter Parker and the real Mary Jane Watson are getting married in a happy ending for the series. And it's also revealed in this moment as well that Mary Jane is also pregnant with their baby. We end the series on a happy note, with the Rose defeated, the Goblin finally gone forever, and no more shenanigans to bother Spider-Man in his life. But the most important thing is that Peter finally has MJ back, once and for all. And with that, we come to the end of the season. Thank you very much for watching my pitch for Spider-Man 98. If you did enjoy this, make sure to leave a like on it and also make sure to subscribe if you are new. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see my pitch for a Spider-Man cinematic universe. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see my first episode in a series for a pitch for MTV Spider-Man Season 2. If you want to support the channel and enjoy my videos, then make sure to click that join button and become a member of the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and keep telling stories.